Hello and welcome to the B Button, it's episode 53. I'm your host Baron Marth and I'm joined as always by the legend, my compadre, the one, the only, the man himself, the man of the hour. Have I put it up enough yet? Yeah, probably. It's Angry Link. How you doing, buddy? I have a new Nintendo console. Ooh, you got a Switch? Sweet. No, no, of course not. Um, you no. got the NES emulator, the little box thing? No, 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 no. Um, I've managed to acquire a GameCube from someone who's not yes! using it. Uh, well, I've got uh, a few <clears throat> classics still sat on my shelf without a GameCube. Um, so, Such as? Uh, Beautiful Joe. Oh, man. Your relationship with that game it, is... It is a brilliant game, though. You know that I would say it's almost the ocarina of time of scrolling beat-em-ups. Damn. It's just amazing. It's just, oh, my God, this is this has changed the game. Kind of, almost. You really delved into I love that game. game. It's the art, everything about it is brilliant. It's cheesy as hell and it's great. What about uh, a bit of Monkey Ball? Yeah, I've already got a copy of that. But there was another copy in the bag that was that came with it. How much do you get? What, what did you get? A GameCube? How GameCube, many games? WaveBird. Uh, I think Wave it's about Bird 12 was. games. It's WarioWare, Metroid Prime. Um, Those who don't Monkey remember Ball. WaveBird being the wireless controller. Yeah, the Bluetooth controller. Yeah. No, no RF. Oh yeah, sorry. So, well, yeah, it's Bluetooth's RF, but you know. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, no. it wasn't the technology we remember this year. It's well, the yesterday. It wasn't the cheap technology that Nintendo liked to use at the time. Yeah. Um. So just a, a bundle of games, basically. Yeah, but I haven't played it at all yet, and you've got it set up. I've oh. been I've been building shelves. I really um, hope it works. But I have actually got some gaming done this week. Um, I'm literally on the last leg <clears throat> of um, Zestria. Tales. Oh, right, first things first. You said that last week. You said you. Oh no! You know how you had your Zelda moment where it's just like, oh, have you been here? Yeah. Yeah, he's been doing that oh. four or five times. So you know, it's one of those. That's cool. More gameplay. Fucking what I paid for it. It's been an epic game. I've, I think I'm about sixty hours in. Um, what but, else have you been hitting up? Yeah, um, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest Builders. Okay, it's still um, on Dragon Quest Building. through, building shit, finding recipes. So done the first chapter? No. No, I think I'm on the last legs of the first chapter. Sure, On we'll that see. one, again, I don't know. But it's a game that you're just like, meh, maybe. A little dabble. Yeah. Um, the only other stuff is Samurai and Kagura. I mean... Right. To be fair, though, it was one of those, I hit the brick wall in Tales. I'm not at the last boss yet. I'm at the boss before the last boss, I think. So you then proceeded to go out into town, and get drunk, not pull anybody, go back and put on Cinderella and Kagura? No, 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 I just didn't waste the time, energy, or money on the going out, getting drunk bit. Nice time. And just put on Cinderella and Kagura. But right yeah, it was, it was literally just a couple of hours after I hit the brick wall of a gay boss on Tails. So mm-hmm. I was just like, mmm, fuck you, Tails. I played some cows, and obviously it was next to Tails in the, um, in the list. So I was just like, yeah, that'll do. Just going to wail on someone, and uh, why not? Yeah. Sexy ninjas. Nice. Sexy ninjas away away. Yeah. Cool. Oh, but I did get an, an interesting email, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Well, you got, got a little invite, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Ooh, I'm, How about I'm, yourself? I'm... Well, okay, let me rephrase that. How's Zelda going? Yeah, Zelda's good, thanks. <laughs> well, I only noticed because... It's very rare for your Xbox um, home, like your profile, when you've not been online, it tells you how long since you've been online. Yeah. It's like I, three days. I was on. I actually put my Xbox on the other day. I can't remember what for. Oh, it was the update to update the yeah, dashboard. Um, but yeah, I know it's just like three days. It's like, wow, he's, he's deep in Zelda. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I came off of Zelda to put on the Xbox. So I think I looked at what the free games were, downloaded them. Then turned it back off again. Went back to Zelda. Um, Zelda's epic. It's just so big. So very, very big. Uh, well, I did some travelling this week and took it with me on the go. Amazing, though. That again, was quite an experience. I remember when we were talking about the <clears throat> Switch in the preceding months up to it, you were just like, no, oh, it's just going to stay in the dark. It's not going to go anywhere. I might take it out if I'm travelling on a plane. But 
Like for its portability, how has it been for you? Well, is it been a kind of a godsend? The only reason why I took it out was because I was travelling on a plane. Yeah. Um, I don't really see me walking around town with this bad boy no, or anything no. like that. But um, yeah, no. But I mean, then, I know, but you've you've been telling me that you like right in the kitchen making the morning coffee. Zelda. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is lots of just like putting that down on the side and oh, whilst the kettle's brewing, I'll just finish that little yeah. shrine off. There we go. You know. So it's yeah, been, it's, been cool. it's been epic. But there's also been some other gaming. I have tried playing something else, just so it almost... Not Horizon Zero Dawn again. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm not doing that intro again. Um, no, it's more about sort of... You know when you're... If, I'm talking a lot about drinking this week. If you were drinking and you had, you're at that point, you think, if I carry on going, I'm going to get smashed. But if I stop now... Oh, the point at which you should think, oh, I'll have a, I'll have a Coke, please. Yeah, or I'll have a pint of water, please. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So at this point, that was a bit where I stepped out just to get some other gaming, just a quick refresh of a bit of Nier Automata around my face or something like that. Yeah. Oh. Um, Sexy Android robots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but also tried a little bit of Dark Siders. Went back to Dark Siders One. Um, got Dark Siders. Sure. To, yeah, because it's free with games with gold. Um, it's a really good storyline. Really, really good. Well, so I say it's a really, really good storyline. It's an it's a new storyline. I remember it being described as the mature Zelda you've always wanted. It's a bit of a reach. Yeah. That's a bit but of a reach. In, in terms of uh, how it works, because it's very much, you've got your dungeons and your yeah, set-piece sort of levels, haven't you? And so Darksiders 2 is very, very Zelda-like. Yeah. Very Zelda-like. It's huge, it's expansive, it got massively undersold when it came out, but it's well worth a play, if you're a Zelda sort of fan. Yeah. Um, the first one's a bit more of a go to this part of the map, hack your way through this lot, go to this... But that, that's fine, because it's got oh, some it was, reasonable um, yeah. sort of fine dynamics and shit in there, so it's pretty good. Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, they've seen the first one, what people liked about <clears> it, and just gone, all oh, right, so you, you kind of did just want us to just do Zelda, but wrap it in a... They made it huge, though, so yeah. one. it was yeah. a massive Zelda-esque game. But yeah, so all in all, Darksiders uh, is free. You know, if you've got your Games gold. with Gold Pass, and go grab yeah. it. It's worth it. Sweet. Cool, well, we should shift on over to our Bullet Bills, otherwise we're never, ever going to get to... Well, uh, for me personally this week, it's a little bit about the Uncharted. There's a big, big chunk of a very interesting game that I think we're both... Been sort of keeping an eye on from a distance, enamoured by. Yeah, we like the premise of it, and um, the mystery of it, and what we because there wasn't a lot told about it. Kind of almost, what's it yeah. gonna be? I'm gonna play it. So uh, yeah, gonna Come go on. a bit in depth with that. Let's go on over to the bullet bills. Yeah, straight in there. Um, we've had some rumbling stomachs in between, um, but we're back on the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, first bullet hole this week. What have we got, Link? Well, from going from something really exciting, something sceptical now, but Destiny 2, it's a big one. It's been officially revealed by Activision and Bungie this week. Um, teaser trailers and reveal trailers and all of that stuff's been going on. But the, the main key points, September the 8th release, Ooh. so the, the internet was right, I think, that's what we had down. Yep, um, that was what was on the poster. Yeah, it is definitely coming to PC, Xbox One and PS4. Uh, there's going to be a first gameplay on the 18th of May, so obviously we've seen his trailers so far. Um, there will be an open beta this summer, uh, early access for pre-orders. Um, but then, I suppose, the disappointing sides of it, because I was hoping they were going to go away from this kind of thing, but the expansion passes... Obviously, I own my notes, I've got... Sigh. Yeah, uh, here obviously, we go. This includes two major expansions featuring new story, co-op activities, competitive multiplayer, a wealth of new weapons and armour. So I'm thinking, basically, it's Crota's End and... Um, sea of... Uh, not Sea of Thieves. <laughs> uh, Wolves... <laughs> Something or other. Wolves, something or another. That's exactly where Destiny is in our yeah. priority list at the moment. Um, so I'm thinking House this is basically that mark too. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's... Wait until the 18th to see some gameplay. I mean, we were see, you saw, you pointed out to me that the initial download 
install. First one, 68 gig. 68 gig. Yeah, Amiga 68 gig. Yeah, and I, I mean, I put the point across, like, there was one other game that I know that's got that kind of sort of size on my hard drive, and that's GTA. But yeah. But again, you did say that you did, yeah, and obviously counter the point with... Well, the thing is, you know, like Battlefield's the same, Star Wars, but all of them, they start off at 40 gig or something yeah. like that and then chip their way up with DLC and all the other content which sort of gets spattered out over the course of the next year and a half. And that's how it, they get to that sort of like yeah. 60, 70 gig. Yeah, it starts but, off at like a 40 gig or something like that. kicking off at 60, well, 70 gig, call it 70 gig, yeah. just... Pff, I mean... Is that going to come on two discs? Or have <laughs> they got... Because... Um, have they got double density or double sided fucking Blu rays that can go over a 50? Uh, yes. They have. Oh, no, 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 because it's 25 gig per side, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. We're, obviously, we're very technically savvy here yeah, yeah, at the yeah. B button. Well, we're, we're technically savvy enough to ask the questions. We're just lazy enough to and not. Dumb enough not to know the answers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nailed it. We're here to ask you um, the questions. But. <sighs> Well, this is it. We're driving the conversation. Yes, that's right. That's what we're doing. Um, encouraging the community to come forth and put us in our place. Mm-hmm. Which, no doubt, they will. When when they come. When yeah. the community does turn up. Then they <laughs> we're will, just yeah. in the corner. Hello. Hello. Do come and listen. Hey. Do come. So, but, disappointing thing that I'm going to say there is a but. Go on. PS4 exclusivity until fall 2018. So, for another year, there's... I basically got six months to decide: Do I want to play with my friends, or do I want to play the most complete version? Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And the thing is, you're pretty much my only other friend I know on PlayStation. Yeah, and and I guess the main issue for me is that this seems to be a pivotal point where you could go as nothing's getting transferred over. As we just watched a sort of an FMV of game, all your guns getting blown. Oh to yeah, shit. yeah, they the 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 story reasons. Yeah. So there, you've got a reason now. Move but on. I like the idea, though, that you are now a nomad, essentially. You're a ronin. A ronin guardian with no master or home mm. or lord. Good. Fuck you, the speaker. I'll bitch that for you. Hopefully he gets fucked up. Man, you, you're bought into this already. It looks like you're, you're destiny born. No, I'm not bought into it yet. I'm probably going to think. So if they're doing the expansion pass thing again, what point is there to wait? Uh, to play it day one, I may as well wait a year. So when they bring the next big major expansion, a la King's Fall, um, or sorry, the fucking Taken King, I'll just get it then and have really shitloads of content to really enjoy, and then I'll find a whole new list of Destiny friends on the PlayStation. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. I'm thinking this is the point where they wave... Hey, pre-order now and play the early access beta. Oh yeah, no, pre-orders are available. But, just remember, everybody bought Destiny. 200 pound beta. Yeah, exactly. And then look at the deals you were getting towards the tail end of its life. No, you can get it now for like 22 quid on Amazon, I think it is in the UK. I saw that on Jelly Deals. It's, yeah, crazy. Ridiculous. 22 quid for that. What now is an amazingly... Full Massive. package. Yeah. yeah. If they can start with that, Phrasing which is 70 gig, mm. hopefully. Hopefully it's 70 gigs worth of decent content. Yeah, and not just loads of high-res textures. Yeah. yeah. Right, so shifting over to our second bullet hole for this week, we've got, well, finally, finally it's happened. Yes. Mad Cats have spent their final life. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to... Didn't know if I was going to be allowed to do that one. Yeah, no, they, they, <laughs> you're no, taking it. It's mine. I've had it, and uh, yeah, they, they've they've done it after uh, being founded back in 1989. After 28 years of just flooding the market with cheap, nasty black and white and red and garish, ho- horrible, horrible, plasticky, nah. tinny, cheap. The I kind of thing that, cheap. Yeah, but the kind of thing which makes you feel like you know. Okay, I bought this for fifteen pound, but it feels like they made it for two. No, no, it's the kind of controller that thinks I should have just spent the fifty quid on the PS4 official one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> every I, time I, I'm a bit of a diehard when it comes to controllers, but yeah, I, I want the official the official ones or better. Yeah, exactly. It's got to be a massive, massive upgrade. Where Mad Cat seems to fall more in that kind of like face down in the ditch. I don't know why I even bother buying a console because if I can afford only afford a Mad Cat's controller, I can't afford a game. Yeah, 
it's the kind of thing that you think you go back to your sort of it feels really cheaply made you know that the markup's the same on the official Xbox controller as it is on the Mad Cat's controller so if you work back from that you can find out how much they've actually spent per unit mm. which I'd imagine is pennies yeah. I'd be very surprised if I could get a pint of beer it's uh, I mean me sorry I'm sure at some points they have done some reasonable stuff they did recently do some Street Fighter joystick controllers which were I think their fighting bad. sticks weren't so bad yeah. the, the arcade sticks it was again it was you're not a professional one right then it's okay yeah, I mean, the, 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 the arcade sticks were kind of very much a, you've got to have something feeling solid, and it's got to have that dump dump sound when you hit the buttons. Yeah. If you haven't, you're just not going to sell any. Yeah. So um, I think they didn't do too bad there. But either way, last Friday, uh, end of March, all the design, um, so all the executives uh, resigned, all the directors, they said, we're out. So the rats fled the sinking ship. And it's bankrupt. Yeah. And uh, is yeah. It category 7, is it? It or? is indeed Category 7, yeah. So does, I don't know what the categories mean. Are they like DEFCONs? I, no. Where no, it no, just no. goes up and it's just like, oh, it's only a Category 1, so you know, you don't have to get rid of everything. And the Category 7 is just like, you know you're fucked, right? No, I, I understand absolutely jack about American yeah. law, but what I would say is it's effectively them just choosing a section of the law which says, hey, I'm bankrupt and I need help. Basically, because it's a publicly or an LTD or whatever, Nobody's actually responsible for the debt other than the company itself, so they've got to sell what, again, I'm going to use the term, assets. I mean, the things that they couldn't sell before, they've now got to try and sell to give to the lenders. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> so, liquidation 101. Um, but, so, all I can say, for me personally on this one, is that obviously they've now announced that bankrupt, we're not going to be seeing any more nasty stuff. Who knows where the likes of Harmonix are going to get their stuff Well, they've gone for a different company now, haven't they? they? There's another company that do the Jaguar shape one, which you can already get really cheap now. Good, good. Um, but yeah, yeah, so as the bankrupt, uh, my my final thought is uh, careful what you wish for. Well, I was going to say, the only, the only note I've got from this is with their cheap, shonky stuff, it's not come as much surprise. No. So, you know, that, that pretty much sums it up for me as well. Goodbye, Mad Cats. Goodbye. Moving on to our third bullet hole this week. What we got, Link? My cheeky, sneaky invite. I mean, ever since <clears> it was announced back in November with the Insider Programme on Xbox, or obviously at seaofthieves.com as well, um, they're always open to him more, so go and join up the Insider Programme, and you might get an invite to Sea of Thieves, Whoa. which I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm ever since E3, back all those years... And it was just like, Rare were like, we're making a game. And you're just like, ah, oh, haven't, haven't they killed the Kinect? And you're like, no, 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 it's not a Kinect game. I'm like, ooh, ooh. All it? excited. And then it's like, it's a pirate game. And ever since, by that, literally from that moment, I was just like, right, sold. I need to play this. So you said to me, oh, I've got an email. Um, I'm going to play it. You can join up now. So I did that. And they went, sorry, this gaming session's full. Blow it out your ass. Should have been here yeah, sooner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But you now you can get on the forums and stuff, and you, once your invite comes in, you're, you're in. Once your name is on the list, you are allowed to the party. So what was it like? Um, well, I got to play about 20 minutes. Oh, because you were running late? Uh, no, no. Um, well, obviously, it was a play session this weekend. Yeah. It was a three-hour session. Yeah, so um, only 20 minutes. Well, it seems they've invited loads more people this uh, this uh, time well, like round. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems I was one of the lucky ones that got in. Oh, I let them fucking let them come in as well. Ruin the game. Um, but yeah, I got I got about 20 minutes before it just descended into a, um, a line-up of bearded errors. So obviously things like daffodil beard. I don't know if I can say that. Um... Or, yeah, a type of beard uh, as an You know, it's the same way that um, Destiny do their weasel. animal and, yeah, the goddamn weasel codes and all of that. And weasel down Division again. did theirs as well, didn't they? But, you know, it's one of those. But I'm excited. I mean, I remember a few notable things um, in the map room, or obviously at the map table on the ship, trying to find where, which, we've got a treasure map. Um... And then... What, you have to kind of... Well, yeah, everybody gets the map. Right. I think. Uh, but you've then got to use that map. It just shows you the map. It doesn't show you where in the ocean it is. You've then got to use the map table to find that map using a bit of... All right, it definitely is that one because you've got that island there, blah, 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 and all of this shit. A bit of cartography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I was doing that, and then all of a sudden I hear the... And just the first opening notes of Rise of the Valkyrie. Um, so I was just like, uh, fuck the map. Out comes the fucking art, uh, the accordion. And yeah, away I was there. Playing a few little little notes. Sipping some grog. Yeah, because I thought, I'll best take it. It's the first journey, I don't want to take the piss. Um... But yeah, no, it, was, it seemed to be a good laugh. Um, what was it like graphically? graphically? I mean, we, it we looked seen... amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, the wave and and stuff like that. It looks fucking stunning. I, we was open on the ocean, and I was just like, right, I need something to do because if nobody tells me something to do, I'm just going to stand there looking at all the water and just looking up at the sky, and, and it just looks really, really yeah. pretty. What were the controls like? Um, pretty much sort of standard first person fare. Really, you've got your different buttons and uh, action wheels and stuff I mean I don't know how much I can actually talk about really because obviously it's all under NDA at the moment mm-hmm. but you've got action wheels and it's typical standard fare really well I mean does it does it move well does it feel um, solid or does it feel a bit well don't forget it's still it's still really really early so I mean it's only the core sort of gameplay loops so does, how so does it's it basically feel? it feels pretty good yeah yeah I mean don't forget I, I got to play a, a brief moment Really, yeah, like, yeah. I was pissing about with the harpsichord. I wasn't really running around. I mean, it's they've been changing and adding stuff week by week or month by month. And every play session they've been doing is because this is, is an alpha, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's really. I mean, it's not point one, point one, point six. So I mean, oh, they're, they're, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to to go through that they want to sort of reiterate and work on. I mean, so it's a never changing thing, but I mean, oh, getting in on the alpha. So, Basically. final question then for you: Does it, you know the, you know when we talk about rare, there's the the golden era, which is your golden eye days, your Diddy yeah. Kong racing, all that sort of stuff, right? And then you've got the connect days, which is like the just whatever Microsoft wanted them to shovel out. Yeah, it was it was like dark days. It was a horrible, horrible time when it's almost like those ones when like with lion heads. It's like, can we make Fable 4? And say, no, 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 we want you to do some Connect stuff. Nobody's doing Connect stuff. Can you do some Connect stuff? It's like, well, we could use it within Fable. Like, you could use it to do, like, your your emoticons. You could do it with all your your Connect. No, no, but we actually need it to be a core mechanic of the game. But but the motion isn't a core mechanic of Fable. No, no, just do a Connect. Okay. Yeah. I feel Rare has been kind of... Horrible. Yeah. So, which one is it? What type of game is it? Does it? Fall? I know you've only had a very brief moment with it. Well, and but again, did it feel a bit more one way or the other? Um, it's a it's an unanswerable question at the moment because essentially what you're getting is you know how like London is described as rings almost, and you've got like what London is, which is the city of London, which is the financial sector, which is a tiny little bit in the middle of London, and then you've got the rings of London. Mm-hmm. It almost kind of feels like it's just like the city of London at the moment. So there's a, there's all of the important bits are there, but and everything else has got to build up around it first. So there's not much in the ways of features and all of that. So so on a more simplistic level, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm yeah, I'm really looking forward to to it playing it more, and cool. actually being able to play it for a, a considerable time, other than twenty minutes. And I look forward but, to getting an invite and then kicking you off the server by being like, yeah, yeah. we're flooding you, yeah. 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 Um, but no, the sea, uh, the ferry, the dams. I mean, it's all really cool. It is I, some random American dude, and like nobody else was on the mic. The one thing you do have to get in on those is, is well, obviously you're not a problem, but you've got to be on the communication because there's no like your captain. It's not like your captain, your gunner, your this that. There's no set role. Basically, the idea is is get there, the ship. There's back. a lot of stuff to do on the ship, and there's not enough people to do it all at once. So it's a case of you might be on gunner and then you'll be navigator at the same time and there's a guy up on the crow's nest that's spotting rocks and reefs and shit like that. So there's a lot of stuff and it looks really cool. Um, I'm excited looking and looking forward to sort of finding out what new stuff they're adding and bringing to the game. Sounds interesting, man. Sounds yeah, interesting. I'm I I really on looking it. forward to it. Yeah, I do. Don't forget, invites are still open, so keep going. Go and sign up. Uh, I think it's at seaofthieves.com. But if you just search for Sea of Thieves invites or insider program, you know, Google's... Yeah, we're not no. idiots, there's Google. Google it, Google it. Cool, okay, well look, let's let's get on some beef, let's start being up on some shit. And yeah, I'm going to take my disappointment and not being able to play Sea of Thieves properly. Good. And go for one of my major beefs and gripes that always niggles. Man, this is a big one, so look, let's shift on over.
first boss of beef! It's the beef time. This is where we lay the meat out and smash into it. Get rid of all that gaming anxiety and frustration and just generally vent. And uh, well, this week, it's a little more... Well, I'm just looking at Link's face. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand back from the microphone and just let him get this out of his system. Well, yeah. It is pretty much that. I kind of think I don't really want to go over it too much because it's just going to really piss me off even more. Small, and I don't, I don't want to ruin it off. Small like, politely yeah. nods backs away from but Link. Brick and mortar stores, or more specifically, a couple of brick and mortar gaming stores. So we are talking about this week CEX, um, the UK-based um, second-hand emporium. Yep. I suppose if you will. Yep. Um, and game, everyone's favourite fucking shit store that's the only real store about anymore so the yeah i mean there's only really two dedicated stores for let's say games and entertainment like that in the uk which are sort of prevalent everywhere the yeah. likes of blockbusters and such like all well, we've had down. game station obviously thanks to game fucking yeah. died obviously blockbuster went the fucking way of the the bankruptcy like mad cats yep um <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's, it's relatively limited options. In game are the GameStop. You know, if you're in U the US, GameStop and game are sort of the equivalent. Yeah, they do pre-order stuff. They don't just do games. They've got to do merch and all that shit. Yeah, all of the uh, accoutrements that they try Ooh. and sell to you on top. I keep using that word a lot, and I, I don't know. I need to find a new one. But anyway, um, I mean, I was recently in game. And I was buying uh, uh, just an adapter for the uh, headphone adapter, sorry, for the Xbox One controller. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I bought a sheet uh, chip. Uh, you said enough. No, yeah. you said enough. Just back away from the yeah. microphone. We've anyway. got concerns. <laughs> so anyway, I was buying something and they said, oh, blah, 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 trying to say, well, have you seen all the stuff that's on for pre-order? Bearing in mind, the list that he showed me had all of the dates of... TBC, which yeah. I then pointed out to him, was like, you do realise you're trying to sell me things that aren't even announced for release. I mean, he's not even trying to sell me fucking uh, the fractured but whole. I mean, admittedly, it would have slipped. At the, uh, it has slipped afterwards, but yeah, none of the stuff he was showing me would actually fucking be in there. Anyway, so I've bought my thing, and he said, "Oh, have you got a reward card?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, there you go." And he goes, "Oh, do you realise you've still got a pre-order for um, Battlefield?" And I was like, "Battlefield." I didn't pre-order Battlefield, Battlefield 1. 1. Yeah, and he's like, no, 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 not Battlefield Battle 1. Battlefield like, oh. 4. I was like, oh, yeah, Battlefield, was it Hardline was the next one? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Hardline. Battlefield Hardline. He was like, no, no, no. I was, 4? I no, 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 not 4. Battlefield 3. Oh, my God, that's a pre ages ago. Yes, yeah, so that's like four, five years ago. Wow. And, oh, yeah, I've been shopping in-game, admittedly, not frequently, but using my reward card and signing up for stuff and getting other bits and bobs and using that... And not one fucking person has decided to go, oh, did you realise... You got a five quid pre-order for a game which is you probably half the price. That, that's <laughs> not even worth five quid now. Yeah. No. Good, good. Yeah, so there was that. That fucking drew me up. The, and I was just like, really? Yeah. He was like, do, do you want another pre-order? I was like, okay, I'll have um, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. And again, I didn't even think about it. They asked me earlier in the conversation where, what I was playing on mostly at the time. I was like, oh, I was mainly on the PS4 because I've just bought loads of RPGs stupidly, so I've got to put some hours into them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he didn't even ask me what I wanted to pre-order for. So you've got a PS4... Red, Red Dead, Dead, yeah. Redemption All of the people that I'm likely to play it with... Xbox. On Xbox, exactly. So Great. Yeah, I've got to go <laughs> fucking back in there to change that. But then, then it gets better. I was out with my nephew a few weeks ago in CEX because... Um, I was getting him a disc cleaner and I was like, you know what, he's been good as gold, we'll see if there's a cheapy little game in there for him, a little Xbox 360 game. Um, and yeah, no, it was not really a great deal in there, but then I turned over and I said, oh, I'll see what they put out for the Wii U, because, you know, I, I was thinking at that point, if I could find a Wii U cheap enough, maybe a copy of uh, Zelda, mm -hmm. so I could maybe get myself some like 100 quid Zelda, yeah, uh, Breath yeah, of the Wild. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd check that out. And then I thought, I was like, oh, cool, a copy of Breath of the Wild's on the shelf. I was like, well, you know, 40 quid online, so if I can get it for like 35 quid. Right, so you're, so you're getting this for him at this point? Yeah, because he hasn't even got a Wii U. <laughs> um, but he's, he's there looking away at the Xbox 360 game, so I'm letting, leaving him be and, you know, see if he wants to find himself something. I'm literally just turning around everywhere and I'm contemplating maybe dropping, 
another 50, 60 quid on a Wii U if I can find one cheap enough. Very unlikely, but, you know, hopefully. Never know, yeah. Um, but then I look at the price of, of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah. £50. Pounds. For a... Bear in mind that CEX... For a second-hand copy. For a second-hand copy, because CEX is, doesn't sell stuff new. I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong, it's probably as it's, it's nearly new as it can be. Not someone's, the point. Someone's blasted through that and gone, fuck that shit, I can't be asked. I want to get a Switch now. Uh, probably. But yeah, no, 50 quid. For a fucking game that I could probably find online for 40 quid, uh, 45 quid. But then it gets better. I've seen in various other stores around my town, in CEX, uh, various other see sites uh, they had NES classics for going for more than the retail which is fine if it's a boxed sealed one because you get okay that's fine that's new mm-hmm. yeah. let's, let's be fair we're just talking middlemen now someone's had to store and keep that for exactly. a long period of time in that condition no enough. no no it was sat in the fucking window so sorry you're, you're asking me to pay more than retail for something that has been sat there getting brittle in the fucking window okay. an electronics something which specifically states in the instructions do not leave in the open sunlight why don't you just take the discs out and fucking face them at the sun and create a sparkly pan to blind the drivers? <clears throat> fucking PS VR headset. Admittedly, it was like two weeks after it came out. Someone had obviously bought one and thought, nah, fuck that shit, I can't be asked." Gone into CX, probably got about quid fifty for it. They chucked it in the window. 400 quid. Bearing in mind, 350 in it at the time. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't come with a PSI. It doesn't come with the things you need for it. 400 quid just for their fucking headset. Because nobody had any in stock. Wankers. Yeah, it is pretty dirty. I mean, I, I was stood in game the other day and I was thinking, yeah, I'm playing a lot of Zelda at the moment. Maybe I should get some more Zelda. So I looked at <laughs> Troy Force Heroes on the 3DS. And, and it's uh, very much that sort of, no, back away. Or were you sort of taken, like, strong-armed and no, just bear-hugged away and just no, back away? So I thought to myself, look, thank God, you know, game was there to help me because um, I... <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, ah, they've got a pre-owned copy. And, you know, let's be honest, on a 3DS, a pre-owned copy makes no difference because it's a cartridge, you know. Yeah, Who cares? unless someone's been literally digesting that thing. Yeah, unless they've shat it out, then it should be all right. Yeah. And, um, yeah, pre-owned copy, great. How much? Twenty nine ninety nine. 30 quid. Okay, sounds a bit expensive, though. Looked in Argos next door, twenty seven ninety nine. <laughs> brand new copy. And it's just like, uh, uh, guys, well, you're, again, this, you're just... Yeah. You're just you're not even like, you know, you, there are no deals at your stores no. other than stuff where you're losing money and you have to get rid of stock a la Guitar Hero or something like yeah. that. Yeah, they've just got too much. It's just taking up too much space. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the general pricing disparities between the online and the brick and mortars is fucking ridiculous as well. I mean, I've had it numerous times. I don't know what it's like at the moment because, to be fair, I don't even look at games website for stuff. I go elsewhere. I go to Amazon or somewhere like that where, I'll, you know, there's a range of different sellers so you can see a good variation of prices. Games are always good to go to when you want a benchmark of how much is too much to ask for when you put it on eBay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as it's less than game, you're, you're sweet. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I mean, remember a headset. Cheap fucking knockoff game one um, for the Xbox 360. So this is a few years ago now. And gone online, looked on the phone on the way down from work. Right, it's like... 10 quid, great, I don't mind spending a tenner, it'll be cheap, it'll be shit, but it's only a tenner. Yep. Like the fucking official cheap shit Xbox one was still like 18, 19 quid. Yep. Like, That's it, for half the price, great. Go down there. Oh yeah, have you got the uh, your own brand headsets in stock for the Xbox 360? Yeah, yeah, sure, it's just over there. It's like, yeah, 16 quid. And I was like, but online it's 10 quid. Well, that's the online price. Who cares? It's your fucking stuff. Are they a different company to you then? No, 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 no. So why can't you sell it to me at that price? And then you can order one in from them and they can replace the one that you've sold at the same fucking price. So we all know Wankers. that... Wankers. We all know that brick and mortar is carrying overhead. So there is a cost related to having the rental space, to paying for the lights, paying for the staff, heating it, marketing, all that sort of good stuff. So I get that. But the one key thing is that I think a lot of people forget when they talk about those overheads and costs is that as a consumer, I don't fucking care. No. I don't care. You should just price it the same everywhere. Fuck it. Make the online one 
16, 17 quid as well. You'll, you'll lose loads of business, but just at least be consistent and, yeah. and stop trying to fucking pull the wool over my eyes. I'm paying for petrol to get down to you. I'm sh- going into your yeah. store to collect it. I've you're got not, overheads. You're not having to send it to me, so there's no postage included in that or anything. I'm coming to your depot to collect your goods and give you my money, and you want me to pay more for the privilege. Fuck you. Yeah. How Fuck many, you. Well, you were talking earlier, on how many times have you been, like, you've gone to game... Obviously, in the town, in our town, you've got a shopping centre where mm-hmm. you've got a game, and then next door there's an Argos, where you literally well, you're stood in game and you go flip, out comes the phone. Let's see what it is in Argos. This, well, How many the, times? There is one thing that we must thank Game for is that the fact that they're always never got enough people on the tills that whilst you're stood in the queue it gives you enough time to google Tesco, Sainsbury's, Argos <laughs> and all the other <laughs> superstores which will undercut them by probably about a tenner uh, but at least five pounds just for you to walk next door so and bearing in mind uh, the place where you, you and I have most frequent buy our games there is an Asda and a Sainsbury's yes. and a Tesco's just a mere sort of half a mile down the road. Oh, so it's gosh. great. Yeah, it's fantastic. So luckily they keep they always oh, give me just Smith's enough toys and a Curry's PC World. Yep, yep, so they give me just choice. enough time every time. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Well look, I think we've um, beefed quite enough on that. I think it's left a good little happy moment. The yes. game gamer shooting themselves in the foot or I don't know, other some way that you can hinder your own own self and analogy and a metaphor. Let me leave you with this thought. Game uh, will, have always charged too much for their stuff. They still managed to almost f- like fold well, the company. They nearly went the way of the Mad Cats. Yeah, and um, they're still charging too much, so let's see how long they last. Right, let's shift on over to our uncharted territory. It's Uncharted Territory. So this is our neandering section, as if the whole podcast wasn't, uh, where we womble our way around the gaming world and just pick on one particular item that we Rough. feel like needs to be discussed. Hopefully stay at that one particular item. Never it done doesn't, it yet. It doesn't always. No. So um, start off this week, um, developer, Slowcap, they've... Uh, They've been talking about their game Absolver for a little while, but we've actually seen a bit more of an in-depth look this week. Um, yeah. They released a 15-minute uh, a walkthrough, or at least um, more of a 15-minute splooge on the fighting engine, or, or how the... Yeah, the sort of basic me- sort of gameplay mechanics and, exactly. and how they're going to work. Yeah, so um, we thought we'd just have a little, a little ramble around that. And um, it's so for those who don't know, Absolver. It's a martial arts based game. It's um, it really reminds me of games like uh, what was the one on the PlayStation, which was just about striking the right part of the um, of the enemy with your katana. Oh, Bushido Blade. Bushido Blade. Yeah, very. Yeah. It feels of that ilk, you know, almost a Dark Souls esque well, kind is, of. Yeah, there is very much a sort of Dark Souls um, sort what? of measure, measured. You can't just go wading in, mashing buttons. Um, and then a sort of similar con- um, control system to uh, For Honor. Yeah. But then obviously when you find out that people from Slow Clap, a lot of them are former Ubisoft employees, then you think, oh, okay. Because, um, again, For Honor would have been in the works for, what, four years ago, five years ago, planning would have been started on that. Mm. Um, but no, yeah, like you say, action, um, RPG, martial yeah. arts, I'm already sold. So then, the the AI is pretty smart as well. It did it? it did seem to be yeah not not completely redundant, um, but now I mean looking at some of the the sort of key points of the the video I mean we sort of find we've got attacking how that works obviously the defending and the parrying and stuff like that. I mean all the move sets were shown off so I mean I think it's just worth just going over really just expanding on a little bit those a bit more really isn't it? Yeah I mean so just a little background for those who are out there um, I know sweet Fanny Adams about martial arts. I've watched loads of martial yeah. arts over the years, movies, I'm into my Hong Kong movies and you know all that sort of stuff. I'm a bit of a Bruce Lee fan as well. So I know I'm one of these couch martial artists. The people who go, oh that's you know, that sort of martial art. Yeah. But I can't do Jack. The one thing I will say is when I looked at this for for a very specific martial art based game and there is sort of changing of stances and you know dynamic blocking yeah and all you, this see, sort of you thing. definitely see some of the form and, and how uh, more traditional sort of 
Kung Fu and Chinese martial arts are based around. Yeah, Chinese them. boxing sort of thing. But what I would say is there's no specific... I, I haven't seen any sort of stances or anything in there which made me look at it and go, it's that martial art, yeah. you know. It is definitely like you say, Kung it's Fu. Not, it it's not Shaolin Kung Fu. No, exactly that. It's it's um. It, I would almost say it's it's a little bit wushui like. It's a little you know Wing yeah. Chun-y. Yeah. Um, it's definitely an Asian sort of style of martial arts that they use in there. But and it's supposed you know it's not supposed to be anything too specific. I like think this. yeah the the it does seem very much a um, sort of wuzia, which I th- I think bear with me or as I understand it is like. You know the the flying through the air stuff where they you yeah you can run on water because your kung fu is so good that kind of stuff it's that it all seems that over the top that yeah you can definitely do those kind of moves mm. I mean it's not completely over the top it's not like the Tony Hawks of well, kung fu games there's no flying through the air there's no flying no, 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 kicks no. and stuff well no, sorry there's there there are roundhouses and all yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff but there's no kind of like Bruce Lee esque no. dragon kicks, you but know. But it, it does, like you say, very it's sort of very evocative visually of that. Um, uh, in terms of the setting, like sort of old kung fu films where you yeah, like you say like eighteen hundred, seventeen hundred. Somebody that kind gets of stuff. kicked in the chest; they're covered in dust. Yeah, 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 yeah. that kind of film. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of emphasis around things such as like. Um, hitting your attacks at just the right point to get those mm. sort of, you know, perfect attacks. Um, there's a lots of nuances around the fighting dynamic. Well, yeah, it? I was just about to say, because, um, like, the attack system, because the, the control scheme is very much, you've got your four stances on one of your analogues, which then you've got, I think, four moves that you can then attribute to that stance. Um, sort of like a combo within the stance, yeah. Yeah, but you can then interlink between different stances at different times and all of this kind of business. So there's this real, what they... Try and coin as a as an easy to pick up but very deep combo, um, or sort of yeah attacking system. There seems to be quite a lot to upgrade on it as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of uh, RPG elements into it, so there's a lot of upgrading. And obviously, you've got your equipment and all of that business and jazz. Mm. So there's there seems to be quite a lot of stuff, and like we were talking about with the feints as well, which brings another dimension. And then Faints, there was the counters, and yeah, yeah, your special perfect, counters, perfect strikes. Yeah, yeah, so obviously that quickens up your your attacks, and this it does seem to be very much a like you say, this is really really cool. How deep is the rabbit hole? Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It's one of these games that I think you'll find casual players. Well, no, I don't honestly think you will. I don't think you'll there'll find be, any casual there'll players. There'll be casual players that play it for a bit and then they stop playing it, and then there'll be the people that go, oh, fuck, time to drop some hours into this. And then the kind of person that when you meet as a newb online, you just get absolutely battered and you're like, please, please, Sifu, teach me. Well, yeah, because <laughs> that's the other thing is, you know, the way that you learn in the game is through experience. They're actually battling. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you want to. Um, learn that person's kicks or punches or whatever you you know you go into the fight and you block them and your experience gains yeah. and you can custom your you know your your defenses can't you, and, you know. yeah I mean one of the points that the um, the narrator of the video was saying that sometimes defeating your opponents quickly isn't necessarily going to pay off because mm. if there's a particular move set or something I don't know I don't know if there's like if you link up certain moves you get bonuses and extra jazz like that I'd imagine if there's the RPG element side of it there will be you know but you, you're after say you're after a particular move then then yeah going in he, he's got that move and he's attacking me with it I've got to try and use like you say my skill in defence to, to obviously not die or get my ass kicked so I can I can spend long enough sparring with or not necessarily sparring but fighting with him to get enough experience in that particular strike to or then learn it myself and essentially steal his move so I mean the other thing you can do is and you said it earlier on is mentoring can't you so yeah. Yeah, if you, you can, kick someone's ass you can offer to teach them yeah that's it you can obviously take on disciples You can. I don't know if you could ask to be a, to be a disciple but hopefully Please there is that up. yeah that's it I like the idea I mean I was talking to you about that. I, I've got this image in my mind that when I, I first read about this and sort of got a bit more of a background, other than just sort of seeing a, a couple of videos, um, there's a scene in Kill Bill where Bill is talking to... Um, do we want to do the beep <laughs> and actually name her properly? But obviously the, the, the bride. Yeah. Obviously she's talking with Bill and they're talking about Pai Mei when she, just before she's off to go and learn from him. And he's telling the story of... He's walking one way down a path and a Shaolin monk's walking the other and obviously Pai Mei and his gracious humbleness blah 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 slightly the, the hint tiniest hint of a nod in sort of respect towards the monk obviously it's not returned so he kicks his ass 
I love the idea of that. And that was the first thing that I thought when I, when I read about this game. So I'm kind of hoping that, that, like you say, you get this cocky kid, this cocky American woman, that comes in and is like, yes, I can use this sword, I can speak Japanese. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, fuck you, can you? You're a punk ass bitch. I'm going to whip your ass. <laughs> and then you teach him. And, and, then, then, and then I teach you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's. That's called grooming, Link. No, no, as long as she's old enough. That's right. fine. <laughs> I think there is various other things that it could be, various illegal things, but you know, it's not So grooming. mentoring in a non-grooming way is available <laughs> in the game. Good. Um, some bits they did sort of say around um, the sort of, you know, when you're looking at playing online with other people, is that how you choose to dress yourself because there's with so the many, equipment. Yeah, exa- obviously it's going to in, in sort of... in ensue or imbibe a certain feel about who you are but more importantly it actually matters about how the game plays for you so lighter equipment lets you move quicker yeah. heavy equipment sort of slows you down gives you better defence well, it, it does pretty much boil down to a basic trade off between either speed or protection yeah and there's like nine different categories so it gives you yeah. quite a lot of variety yeah, in that yeah. sort of you know um, I'm hoping it does go a bit more in depth and say that your arms are quicker because you've got lighter stuff on your arms I'm hoping it kind of does because I'd like the idea of just like, oh, right, he's wearing loads of heavy stuff and all of this stuff. It's like, yeah, I can't move around a lot, but you ain't gonna, you are not gonna move me and I'm gonna punch the shit out of you with my fucking super rapid Wing Chung fucking machine gun strikes. <laughs> you know, I love the idea of that, but you can size up a person by what they're wearing because once you get to know the, what equipment is and what the protections it offers, you can think, oh, fuck, he's, he's, he can, gonna take a beating before yeah. he goes down. Damn or, right. This guy is going to just jump around like a monkey and fucking just be not where I'm fucking punching. And he's just going to zip around the fucking map. It's um, it's really exciting. It looks interesting. It looks really interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, going back, like you say, the, I love the idea with the defending. You've got your seam, it's simple. Right, I hold block and you watch the animations and it's catching the, the, the kick or it's catching the punch or it's dodging. Like you say, with the parrying system, which you can... You can take damage, but if you parry it properly, it will mitigate the, the yeah. damage if you counter it and if stuff. If you counter it, it gives the attack back. Yeah, yeah it's loads of little systems at work that look really interesting. I mean, they didn't turn, um, sorry, they didn't touch upon like the story or lore, but I'm kind of hoping that they go with the Dark Souls kind of thing, and you've just got this world that, again, it's a, it's a hole that you can dive down in, it's just how far you want to dig. Yeah, yeah. Because you can play Dark Souls and just go from A to B and all of that, but that's not really how you should play Dark Souls. Dark Souls is you go in there and there's this and... Yeah, you caught up in the canon and lore and all that good That's stuff. it, there's yeah. loads of cool shit in Dark Souls that I really wish I had the time, patience and energy to play, because I, I've heard nothing but good things and I know it'd be a really great game, but I know I would... To complete it, maybe you have to buy three or four TVs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and controllers and all of these things. But I'm hoping it's it goes in that kind of law and you go out and find your adventure. I mean, there's loads of cool stuff that's that's already been announced and I'm sure there's loads of secrets that they've yet to show off. But all in all, I think it's it's looking a really solid fighting game. Yeah, I mean, for me, it looks it, it looks it looks complex. It yeah. does look complex. Um, I hope they manage to strike that nice line between giving the depth that you want and the accessibility. It's a very, very difficult line to walk. I very, I like it. It's very much a different. Uh, it's sorry, difficult. It's very much a kung fu kind of thing, isn't it? Like it is simple yet complex. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is fast but slow. So I like it. It's almost got that juxtaposition there, isn't it? Be like water, my friend. Um, but yeah, so it it gets it does it pings my radar from it the whole the sort juices of like flowing. ooh martial arty fighting yeah. game. Yeah. One thing again, it's doing something that I very rarely let myself happen. I'm getting hyped. I'm believing the hype, what? even though Public Enemy told me not to. So I think the last time was No Man's Sky. Um, a little bit in the early days, and then I learned to temper my expectations because then it's beaten out of me. No, no. Again, I saw the shitstorm arise, and I kind of thought that would happen anyway. But I, you know, I, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't lesser than what I thought it was probably going to be. Link, I'm so walking away from No Man's Sky right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, again, we're going to go back to a beef, maybe. But, um, so, I don't know, final thought for me on this one is, I just, I hope it ends up being 
something which is accessible. Like that, you know, the, everything I've seen about it says this is a, a martial art fighting game with some RPG sides to it. And I, to me, that sort of ticks all the boxes. Yeah. It's got a level of complexity in the martial arts that I like. The social side of it's really interesting because you can spar with people or you just want to go and fuck them up. Yeah, There's or, the weapon system and the variety of weapons. So, and nunchucks, so all of and, that yeah. really does it for me. I'm a complete kung fu geek. But, yeah. and here's the big but, it looks... It doesn't look aesthetically to me that amazing. I'm concerned that there's going to be lots of repetition of the same move sets in there. Hopefully, it won't be the case. But uh, oh yeah, very interested. Want to see where it goes? Looking good, good, good. Right then, folks. So there we are. That gives us another episode, episode fifty-three, wrapping up. Uh, Link, final thought. Big news next week. Big news. Big news indeed, yeah. And uh, so, for me, it's going to have to be Adios Amigos from Angry Link. It's Adios. Adios.